in this episode, we talk about public talking like a boss. Welcome to Ask the LJ's episode 27. Damn, that's quite a lot now. It is. But it's a lot. when we get to 50, it'll be yeah, and then when we get to 100. So keep those questions coming in, guys. We need more questions. Hashtag Ask the LJ's. You can do it on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Snapchat. Just get them over and we will answer them. If you do them on Snapchat, you do have to send them directly to us. We won't just pick it up off a hashtag. Yeah, it's not and try not to do them video form, to send them text form. I actually have got one, which we can do. Oh, I think. Two questions, oh, I've sorry. saved it, it's on my okay. phone to remind me. Cool. So today we've got a question from one of our SBS Elite guys, and if you're thinking what the hell is SBS Elite? Well, it used to be Elite Fitness Mentoring. And Elite Fitness Mentoring looked at training, nutrition, marketing, social media, business, basically everything. But now with the SBS Academy, that takes care of the training, nutrition, mindset, coaching, basically all of the practical. And some of the business stuff. Some of the business, yeah. Module four, we touched base on that. But SBS Elite, when the new website drops, which will be very soon, uh, we've decided to rebrand it under Shredded by Science Elite. And it's for those which, it's gonna be specifically marketing, business, social media, There'll be like monthly mastermind calls. There'll be uh, mini courses on things like how to set up a seminar, how to use Snapchat, how to use Instagram. So again, looking specifically at a fitness context when it comes to marketing and business. So again, more news on that when we actually get the new website up and we can actually start taking on new people. Indeed. So Lawrence, question. This one's from Simon Pacey. I don't Passy. know if it's Passy or Pacey. I think it's Passy. It's two S's, so I'm going yeah. to say Passy. Passy. Sorry if we're butchering your name, Simon and Joe. Um, but Simon and Joe are two brothers. SJ who, Fitness. Yeah, run a Check company called SJ Fitness. Um, I'm pretty sure... Is this that their Snapchat handle? SJ Fitness? Yeah, it should be. Should if be. they've been <laughs> learning. So We're actually live streaming it now in SBS Elite. Yeah. So uh, um, the guys are listening. They're getting so a sneak preview. SJ Fitness have managed to arrange a nutrition talk at AXA, AXA, which is that an insurance company? Yeah, I think it is. I think it is an Quite insurance company. Yeah, uh, which is round the corner from the gym they're at. So congratulations, guys. We're live streaming just over there. So I'm going to say congrats. Um, it's their first proper talk uh, in front of people as SJ Fitness. So that's exciting and a little nerve-wracking at the same time. Yeah. Um, so basically, they would appreciate any tips on delivering nutrition talks publicly or delivering well, any sort any of talk sort. publicly um, with the aim of educating, motivating, inspiring, whatever else. Cool. So, first and foremost, uh, if you've never done public speaking, you're probably, your bum hole's probably going like that. You're probably gonna get a dry mouth. Um, and that's, even that, I've been, I've done teaching for five years. I've done public uh, at Body Power, LIW, uh, amongst other places. The, the uh, probably the biggest one was actually a primary school. I actually had to go and do a fitness thing with hundreds of primary school children. Oh, God. They loved it. So um, nice. first thing's probably the nerves and stuff like that, which you will have, but just embrace that. And things you've got to look at is your probably your strengths and what you actually know about. Don't try and do a seminar on talk something about hormones because you think it's gonna make you sound intelligent when in actual fact you sound like a complete dickhead. Uh, I have seen that, so that is a natural real world example. So really focusing on what your strengths are, knowing that, and then actually what, who is the target audience? Who are you doing the talk to? Is it advanced level, beginners, intermediate? And this is things when I used to teach actually uh, as a lecturer, where teachers would not know how to pitch at a certain level. Mm -hmm. So just, you may have really extensive knowledge, you may be like high up here in regards to your education, your knowledge, but then you need to pitch it at the right level. And if you don't pitch it at the right level, 
is probably going to be a shambles. So most of the talks, obviously for this talk, it's going to be uh, more of a corporate thing. Mm -hmm. So first and foremost, it'd be like finding that information. Who's actually going to be there? Is it male? Is it females? What are some of the problems? What are some of the the topics that you, they may want to see? And then evolving your talk around what they want rather than what you think they want. So actually getting some information, speaking to the company and asking them what it is they want and then tailoring a talk around that. So on that note, with a company like AXA or AXA, any big kind of corporate company, they will generally have data on um, a lot of their employees. So mm -hmm. it's a case of how many absences, how many illnesses, all the rest of it. Does their productivity drop off after a certain amount of time during the day? Um, you know, various things you can find out that can be, to a certain extent, influenced by nutrition. Mm. Um, and this is what the companies are going to care about. The companies, corporate corporations aren't going to care about their employees being shredded. Their you know, Companies are going to care about their employees turning up to work on time, being productive throughout the time that they're at work. Um, they're going to care about their overall productivity over the course of like a year. If some of the um, employees have things like seasonal affective disorder, things like that, then they may become um, quite depressed and not very productive in the winter. And I'm not saying that nutrition can fix that, but certainly a, a lifestyle, um, a healthy lifestyle can certainly help to alter um, someone's self-esteem at that point, which may be able to help. So it's, it's things like that. So it's find out what that company cares about. Why does that company care about nutrition? Why has that company hired you to do a talk? It's looking at what's in it for them. Because exactly. let's be honest, most people exactly. are selfish. If you go into the mindset, yeah, I'm only going to do the talk because I want to get a load of people to sign up through one-to-one -one training or whatever, yes, you've still got to get yours, but you've got to think, like, always think about what, that other pe that other person or company, what is it they want? Mm. What can they gain from it? Because they'd be the ones which are inviting you in. They'd be the ones which may pay for it, for the talk or for maybe like a corporate wellness deal and stuff like that. But again, rather than just being like, what's in it for you? Give first. Mm -hmm. And then if you do a good job talking, even like worst case scenario, if you do an amazing job talking and you don't get the corporate company to hire you for corporate wellness, what you do get is if you've got a room of 20 people, that means you've got 20 people you can impact on, 20 people you can educate, 20 people you can motivate to then follow up with, oh, can I find out a little bit more about nutrition or training and, and stuff like that. The good thing the guys have got in that is a local, it's just around the corner. And obviously if they're doing one-to-one -one PT, they still need to be looking at what can we, what do we want from the talk? Um, and again, is it, if it's semi-private training, if it's group training, if it's corporate wellness, you've got to go in there with some sort of idea of what it is they want, but what, as a byproduct of giving a good talk, what could potentially come from it. So in terms of actually giving a good talk, the first thing, especially if you're going into a corporate environment, is to be professional and make a good first impression. So dress well don't turn up in the clothes that you just come from a one-to-one -one pt session in you may be a bit sweaty you may swell up you know smell a bit or a stringer um, with a nip slip yeah exactly dress appropriately and use language that they are going to relate to so there's no point like going into a corporate event and effing and blinding um, like you would if you went into, like my friend, I did a talk for our friend Lou's gym. And I've, I actually, I had the privilege of meeting a whole bunch of his clients beforehand in a, in so a you knew party the setting. I knew the audience anyway. I knew that they would not only not mind me swearing a little bit, but would actually probably find it quite amusing and may well help um, some of the content stick because I would, you know, it's a case of using language to drive points home. Mm -hmm. So know your audience in terms of that aspect as well, not just what do they want, but what sort of delivery is going to turn them off and equally what sort of delivery is going to turn them on. More practical stuff, always have water. Mm -hmm. Always, always have water. Because especially if it's your first time speaking, as Luke said, your mouth will go dry. 
Mm -hmm. um, and you may well find yourself becoming a bit croaky, a bit hoarse, coughing, all the rest of it. Um, don't do the funky speaker dance. A lot of people you know, will shift from side to side, from one foot to the other, whilst they're speaking, without noticing. They won't notice well, they're if doing you're it fidget, at all. don't try. Try not yeah. to have things in your hand or try something like to, that, where you could rustle and do stuff like that. I know I'm very handsy when I talk. I gesticulate quite a lot. So to that end, I tend to have something in one hand. So one hand is occupied. The other hand, free to do stuff. Um, try not to kind of fiddle with your hair too much or the rest of it. Give the impression that you are calm and relaxed and confident, because not only will that kind of yeah, it's the whole fake it till you make it thing. Convincing yourself that you're calm and relaxed and acting in such a manner will make you feel more calm and relaxed and help you deliver your talk in a, um, a more appropriate way. And also it conveys to your audience that you know what you're talking about. It's very, very obvious to an audience if someone is nervous and that can come across like you aren't particularly confident on the subject matter. And they're ultimately paying you to be an authority on the subject matter, so you need to come across like you're an authority on the subject matter. Um, I've done the funky dance once at a gym because it was really, really cold. It was a gym up in Scotland in January. There was a breeze blowing through the door. So I was moving around to keep warm. And you know, that, was, that was about it in terms of the funky dance stuff. So to summarise... Do the research and get the logistics as well. Time, date, make sure you know where you're going to be. Get there early. Make sure you know how many people are going to be there. If it's a small number, try and make it more interactive. If it's a large number, then things like, do you have access to a PowerPoint so you can have some slides? If not, then plan in a talk where you don't have slides or you may be going with a handout. Um, other things to think of as well is providing more value ongoing. So not just that one hour talk you've got. But little things like capturing email. So if you've got, mm -hmm. say you've done a talk and they wanted a copy of the slides, you could say, oh, if you put your email there, I'll drop, I'll send the slides over to you when I get back in an hour's time. But I will also add in, like there's a little training plan, there's a little nutrition guide. So giving them that value there and obviously getting their email address. So if you've got, an, if you're looking at email marketing, you can maybe put them into your email list and give them some, some content as well. Other things like offering them a free consultation or if you wanted to start off with say a small group guys or whatever it is semi private Facebook group say get them onto a Facebook group just don't think of just that one hour because it, again it's hard to just have an impact on that person for one hour you've got to try and get them engaged and um, from the off basically it's like when you work on a client you've got to get that client buy-in early on but then keep it yeah so if you can get them on the email list if you can give them more value than just an hour capture an email or a phone number and as you said use guys are near near them as well so say what we're gonna do we've spoken to the manager or HR and what we said we do like maybe a two or three week or four week um, program just for use guys there's only six spaces so there's 20 people there uh, it's gonna be four weeks where we're gonna give you training nutrition and train with us three times a week it'd be before work or at lunch and you've actually provided them some value and you've given them some scarcity there and there's only six spaces but there's say 20 in the room and then you can provide that value to them over a longer period of time and remember guys if you're personal training you're watching this or listening to this and you aren't where you want to be then you might not have money but what you do have is time so offer your time and I would definitely use guys there if you want to do small group or whatever it is then offer there's a limited space you've done this courtesy it's free mm -hmm. and then once you've done that for, for say like four weeks and you've given them amazing value they've got good results they've seen the changes then you say right we're looking to do this an ongoing thing we're looking at doing it at this price and then you've just got then you potentially got thousands of pounds per month mm -hmm. The other way of going. going down that is to say to them, we will be at the gym um, between these times on these days mm -hmm. and it's just a drop-in thing. You can come down, we'll be running a program mm -hmm. um, that you can join in when you want. 
you know, it's it just yeah, if it's like a pre-existing exactly. Class. As in, you basically, you just you come up with a set program that people can drop in and out of. So kind of probably full body sessions with a decent amount of progression in there, suitable for beginners, um, almost like a learn to lift type class. People can come down, they can drop in, drop out, um, and it's exclusive to employees of of that, that company. company. So Make again, them feel special. Yeah, and don't go in, give them a talk for half an hour, an hour. And, and then just be a straight up sales yeah, pitch. Exactly, don't do that. Show them your ongoing value because again, it's hard to convey just how valuable a personal trainer can be in a one hour nutrition talk. I'm going to go there. I'm going to bring sex into this. I'm going to do it. It's our show. Think about this. If you have that one hour session, mm-hmm. that's like having getting them to have sex with you on the first date. Mm-hmm. It's very, very unlikely they're going to do that. So you're going to have to pr- uh, provide ongoing value. You're going to have to wine and dine them. Mm-hmm. You're going to have to court with them, take them out, show them your nice dumbbell rack, show them your squat rack, show them your nice meals you can cook or they can cook. Don't send them dick pics. No. Right, guys, thank you for watching or listening. Until next time, take care.